Let's go over the entirety of Calculus 2. Its focus is mainly series and integrals. Now this will be a bit harder than Calculus 1, so brace yourself. Okay, let's get started. Power series. A series in mathematics is just adding up numbers given a pattern. Note that this could sum an infinite number of quantities. Now in Calculus 2, we deal with a special type of series called the power series. It's in this form. It's the summation of the coefficient c sub n multiplied with x raised to n from n equals 0 to n equals infinity. Now admittedly, that's a lot to take in. But all you have to do to get your series is substitute n equals 0, giving c sub 0, n equals 1, giving c sub 1 multiplied by x, n equals 2, giving c sub 2 multiplied by x squared, and so on. Power series are talked about in calculus because they have many applications, like approximating difficult functions. Let's look into a special type of series that's useful for this purpose. Taylor series. The Taylor series is quite special. It is a series expansion of a function about a specific point. The Taylor series is represented using this sigma notation, which when evaluated, for example, from n equals 0 to n equals 2, outputs a polynomial known as the Taylor polynomial. Let's follow the pattern in our series. The first term is simply the function f evaluated at a. The next term is the first derivative of f evaluated at a multiplied by x minus a. The last term is the second derivative of f evaluated at a all over 2 factorial multiplied by x minus a squared. We stop here because we chose n equals 2, but you can keep going until infinity. So this polynomial is precisely the approximation of the function at a certain point. A cool fact about this series is that when you increase the value of n in your series expansion, you end up with a more accurate approximation of the function. Convergence and Divergence of a Series Similar to the concept of continuity, a convergent series's partial sums approach a certain value. For example, this series, when expanded, approaches the value 2 thirds. So, we call it convergent. Now, a divergent series's partial sums usually go to either negative or positive infinity, or they simply don't approach a specific value. For example, this series, when expanded, approaches positive infinity. Hence, we call it divergent. Ratio test. The examples shown in the last section were pretty simple. But what if we have a more complicated series expression, such as this one? The ratio test helps us easily determine the convergence of a series. It is defined as this expression, and it involves the use of limits. If the value of the limit L is less than 1, the series is convergent. If it is greater than 1, the series is divergent. And if it equals 1, the series may be divergent, conditionally convergent, or absolutely convergent. Integration techniques. Another massive part of Calculus 2 is integrals. In my Calculus 1 video, I briefly talked about integrals and how they find areas under curves. Calculus 2 dives deep in the actual integration rules used to evaluate integrals. Now these rules are quite extensive, as you can kind of tell from this list below. This is a summary of how you go about integrating certain functions. However, some functions are too complicated, 
And sometimes, these rules just don't cut it. That's why we have our integration techniques. The main ones are integration of partial fractions, which require partial fraction decomposition and then integration, integration by parts, which makes you follow a certain formula, polynomial long division to simplify the expression inside the integral, U substitution, which involves changing the variable of integration, and finally, which in my opinion is the hardest, trigonometric substitution. I mean, just look at a simple problem that uses it. Applications of integrals. Integrals are a very powerful tool, and they become even more powerful in Calculus 3, where we start dealing with 3D calculus. But for now, in the realm of Calculus 2, the most notable applications of integrals are within physics. We can use them, for example, to find the center of mass of rigid bodies, calculate total work done, or even find the magnetic field imposed at a particular point due to an infinite wire. Now, isn't that so cool? And that's it. Again, details were left out, but if you thought Calculus 2 could have been mastered in this short video, then you are crazy.